Hi everyone, it's Nicole for Simon Says Stamp with the December edition of Making the Cut. Making the Cut is my series here on Simon Says Stamp where we talk about all things die cutting and of course during the month of December, what better time to create a die cut holiday card. I am creating my background with this snowflake burst background plate. We also have the pine frame to frame up our design and we're going to finish the design with these wonderful ornaments. This is the ornament tags. So to start, I have die cut the pine frame from some Simon Says Stamp ivory cardstock. You can see it die cuts this beautiful detailed frame. I chose to start with ivory cardstock instead of white today because I felt like it gave a little bit more of an elegant feel. The whole goal of today's card is kind of bucking the traditional color palette for Christmas and going with an elegant gold and white or gold and cream color combination. I do want to add some green though to my pine needles or my pine branches and I'm using artichoke and kale positively saturated inks from Simon Says Stamp with a small blending brush to add color. Now I'm going to add color both to the pine branches on the frame and the individual pine branch that comes with this set. We're not going to keep them super green. You will see that I'm going to add flocking. Uh, it's not real flocking, but we're going to give our pine branches a flocked look near the end of today's video. Once I have the green the way I want it, I am going to set this aside. It will dry. It will lighten a little bit as the ink dries and is absorbed into the cardstock but that is going to be perfect. I've also die cut the snowflake burst background from that same ivory cardstock. But if you guys know me at all, that's a little too pretty and perfect for my taste. We want to add some sort of awesome, distressing or embellishing to that background to really make it shine. I love the very subtle, beautiful snowflake background but let's go ahead and add a little bit of color with some Simon Says Stamp Latte Positively Saturated Ink. We're gonna go around the edges. This is just a very nice light brown. Where the die cut snowflake design is, it will kind of catch that ink a little bit more and deepen and darken those areas. Once I have a little bit of color added to the background, and I did concentrate it mostly around the edges, I'm gonna grab my splatter box and some decayed Distress Mica Stain, which I know is a Halloween color, but hear me out, it's going to give this beautiful, rich, kind of champagne type of Mica Stain splatter. I wanna make sure that this is shook up really well and then we're just gonna add some splatter all over that background. I love those bigger droplets in with the fine mist. Look how beautiful our frame looks against this background. Let's go ahead and die cut the rest of the elements for our card before we put together the flat shaker that's going to be the background. Using our ornament, ornament tags, I have used all specialty cardstock from Simon Says Stamp to create these elegant ornaments. Now, if you don't need a card and you need gift tags, you could create these beautiful gift tags just like I did here, and they would be amazing. So the base of this ornament is the gold matte mirror cardstock. Then on top, I have used some of the Lux Simon Says Stamp cardstock to die cut the snowflake and add it right on top. Even with all of that detailing, it die cuts perfectly. Using a gold glitter cardstock from Simon Says Stamp, I did die cut the top of my ornament just off the edge of the cardstock. I trimmed it up and I'm layering that over the top there just to give it a little bit more definition and detail. 
you can see how this is going to look once it's hung from the little frame. I think it's going to be adorable. Using some of the velvet cardstock, I die cut another ornament, and this one has some beautiful texture to it. I'm adding some glitter borders from that same Simon Says Stamp gold glitter cardstock, and I've die cut some stars. All of the dies come in that ornament tag set. It is so much fun to create your own custom ornaments like this, and they are the perfect size. I love them. So I added the little decorative detail to my ornament, and I'll add three of these stars right through the center. For the top of the ornament, I added this gold matte little ornament topper. And again, I just die cut the top of this right off of the edge, and then I trimmed it up just to give it a little bit more detail. I'm gonna trim away any of the excess hanging off the edge of my ornament. The next thing I did was I did die cut each of these ornaments one more time from some plain white cardstock. You could also use the ivory cardstock we used for the background or the frame, whatever, I just used a scrap. And I am actually going to glue these ornaments right on top of those and it's going to give them a little bit more stability. I find that sometimes with the specialty cardstock, it can be a little bit thinner and I think that extra layer just gives them more structure. So now that we have our components, it's time to put it all together. We're going to start by grabbing some packaging. I thought I was going to use this packaging, but it really was too small. So I'm gonna grab something from a bigger set. I always keep a random assortment of packaging from Simon Says Stamp, and we're going to create a window for our flat shaker. We are going to place that snowflake background into a clear shaker. We're going to add my favorite Simon Says Stamp icicle glitter, as well as some of the new beautiful sequins. And then we're going to place our frame on top and hang the ornaments on top of the shaker. I wanted it to look like a beautiful, snowy, elegant background back behind these ornaments. I always like to cut my window for my shaker about three quarters of an inch bigger than the panel itself. I didn't measure it exactly. I just made sure that it was big enough that I could wrap it around all sides of my panel. Now I'm going to flip my panel over onto that clear packaging and we're going to place long strips of double-sided adhesive down the long sides, just like this. Once we have the adhesive down the sides, I'm going to pop this up with something sharp. I always just use a piercing tool or even the tip of your scissors. And I like to attach the long sides first and I'm going to be really firm with this. I don't wanna buckle the card stock at all, but I want it to be very, very tight to those sides. So we're gonna just wrap that really nice and tight. I like to cut the bottom of my pocket or one of the small short sides at an angle and we're going to put adhesive down along the bottom edge now and fold that in. I like to cut it at an angle so that it lays nicely back behind this panel. This is going to be attached to a white top fold or side fold card base and so you'll never see any of that adhesive. Before I fill my shaker, I did go around the perimeter of my frame with a little liquid adhesive. I might have been able to get away with one eighth inch uh, double-sided adhesive, but I it's pretty teeny tiny and thin. So I did go ahead and use some liquid adhesive. Then I just like to put something heavy on top. I use this tray that was filled with supplies. Next, I am using that, or placing that double layer, pardon me, of ornament back behind the decorative ornaments. And that's going to dry while we fill our shaker. I'm going to place a generous amount 
of this icicle glitter inside. I love this stuff. It's nice and chunky. It looks like snow and it is so beautiful when shook up. Now, in addition, I love the new sequin pack from Simon Says Stamp. So I'm going to put some of these in here too. I kind of call them champagne colored because I think that they're going to play nicely with all of the golds and ivories that I'm including in this elegant card. Along the top of the pocket, I am going to place some more double-sided adhesive. And again, we're going to trim the top of our shaker cover at an angle, remove the backing paper, and fold that down to secure the pocket. Then you can simply shake it up and see how beautiful the shaker material looks in this flat shaker. It's going to be fantastic back behind these ornaments and greenery. Next, I want to take some foam adhesive and place it on the back of my ornaments, as well as adding in a little bit of ribbon. This is some Spellbinders ribbon, and I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer. And then I just use the tip, that piercing tip tool, and I'm going to place the ribbon back around the top of this panel. Remember, this panel is going to go on the front of a card base so we can hide anything we put on the back. I've only cut it maybe a half inch longer than what's needed. I'm gonna remove the backing paper from all of my foam adhesive squares, and we're going to just tuck this up and under and hang the ornament from the top of our card. Now, I'm not quite done decorating my ornament yet, but we're going to come back to that in just a minute when we add all of our finishing decorative details. On the other ornament, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide a little bit of that ribbon, and I'm just securing it with some foam adhesive squares, and I'm placing those on the back. Now, I forgot, this ornament will slightly overlap the other, and I do not want it to buckle up kind of weird. So I moved a couple of those. Again, I'm just gonna pop the top of my frame just a tiny bit so I can slide my ribbon right underneath there and wrap it around to the back. Once I have secured my ornament to the front of my card, I will secure those ribbon tails to the back. Now, if the Gold and ivory are not your color theme. Imagine doing red and white, red and green, blues and purples or blue and white. You could do this with any color scheme that you like and I think it would be absolutely beautiful. You could also turn your ornaments the other direction and do a landscape style card instead if you like. Now I'm going to make sure that I am straightening up my ribbon. So I'm going to pull it straight, pull it taut, and then I'm just securing it with some double-sided adhesive there on the back. That looks great. Finishing detail time. The first thing I want to do is glue down that extra branch for the extra greenery. Extra greenery to me always just is the perfect touch for anything like this. I'm a big fan of greenery on my card designs. So we're just going to glue that down in place for now. I just put glue down the center. I'm gonna leave the needles themselves loose. I've tied a little bow out of some extra ribbon. I think one of those tails might be a little long. Let me snip that off. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top of the ornament on the left and just glue that little bow down. I felt like it would be too much to put a bow on each, but this teeny tiny little bow here on this white or ivory ornament is perfect. I'll use some tweezers to clamp and hold that down in place while the glue dries. While that glue is drying, I am taking the tip of a palette knife and some Tim Holtz opaque grit paste, and we are going to flock our pine needles. I love the look of flocking, and you can achieve this by just taking a teeny tiny bit with your palette knife and rubbing it onto your greenery. I've done this on a couple of cards this season and it is an incredibly fun textured look that I absolutely can't get enough of. For this card, I felt like it added the most perfect touch. 
Once I'm done, I'm going to allow that to completely dry. Look how awesome it looks. And we're going to embellish the center of our snowflake and our other ornament with some pearls. I've got some gold and some ivory pearls here. We're going to alternate the stars with these little gold pearls and we'll place an ivory pearl in the center of the snowflake. This adds extra texture and extra interest to the design. I love to use my Simon Says Stamp embellishment wand to easily pick up all of these little embellishments and place them right where I want them to go. Let's grab one more and then let's grab our ivory and place our pearl right in the center. So our ornaments are adorned. It is time for a sentiment. I love these decorative sentiments from Simon Says Stamp. And so we are going to stamp it on a scrap of ivory cardstock to attach to our card. This is the card base I'm using. I love the pre-cut and scored card bases from Simon. We're going to go ahead and glue our shaker panel right to our card front. Now, if it's popping up a little bit, I like to use something heavy around the corners, or you can use tweezers, or you can even go extreme and use several pairs of tweezers if you have them. I love to use them kind of as clamps to hold things down and hold them in place while things dry. Now, while this is drying, I will stamp my sentiment. I chose Season's Greetings. We're going to use a powder tool to prep our cardstock first. I will stamp this with embossing ink right here on the ivory cardstock. We'll use Simon Says Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder to emboss this. Die cut our sentiment with the coordinating die. And I love this antique gold. It's gonna match our card perfectly. I'm gonna pop it up with a little foam adhesive right over our flocked greenery. Simple as that, we have a beautiful, elegant shaker card, perfect for the holiday season. Thank you so much for joining me today for the December 2023 edition of Making the Cut here on Simon Says Stamp. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube for your convenience. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you in the next one. I'm Heidi, Simon's Mama and founder at SimonSaysStamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.